This is the new iPhone 16 Pro, according to a massive new leak from Majin Buu that just came out, showing that Apple is finally changing the look of their camera bump for the first time in over five years. Now Majin showed off this quick sketch revealing a triangular camera bump with a metal ring that wraps all the way around, with Apple converging the black lens area into one large shape, basically giving everyone on Twitter fidget spinner vibes. However, I think his translation of the leak was wrong, and in my opinion, the triangular shape is actually another tier of etched matte glass, like these renders that I created with Shilesh on Twitter, showing how Apple will continue to use three separate camera bumps with metal rings, which I think looks so much better in a design that could actually make sense for Apple to make. The only problem is that the leak was completely fake. Yes, I got tricked into believing this leak and creating some of my own renders to show it off before Majin Buu explained a couple of days later that, quote, this is literally just the safe area for case producers. It's representative of where they can't cover. So it looks like Majin Buu jumped the gun on this leak, just like I got tricked and jumped the gun to get some renders created ASAP, but mostly because all of the other renders online looked terrible and didn't make any sense at all. So this of course leaves a burning question that I'm gonna answer in this video. What in the world is the iPhone 16 Pro actually gonna look like? Will Apple finally change the camera bump after five years? And what overall design changes and general feature set can we expect later this year in September? For starters, the most important thing to understand is that Apple upgrades their iPhone on a three-year cycle. Every three years, they have a super cycle update, which always includes a physical redesign to the chassis of the iPhone. If we go back in history to the iPhone 6, it was a super cycle update with a complete redesign, switching to curved metal edges and a larger 4.7 inch display. The success was more of a small update where they improved performance and upgraded the camera to a 12 megapixel sensor, and because of the lack of big updates, they also released the 6S Plus to help upsell more iPhone upgrades. Then they had the iPhone 7, which was a bit controversial because they got rid of the headphone jack and introduced the original AirPods, while finally changing the front bezels of the iPhone to fully black, which looked so much better than white, especially matched with the new jet black finish. But this time, they did something new. They gave the iPhone 7 Plus an exclusive feature, the dual camera bumps that enabled portrait mode photos for the first time ever. So that officially finished the first major three year update cycle. A redesign with the iPhone 6, a camera update and introduction of a larger model with the 6S, and a new front design and dual cameras with the 7. Then a new super cycle update happened with the iPhone 10, showing off a complete redesign design with a stainless steel chassis, an edge-to-edge -edge display on the front, and Face ID. The year after that, we got a very minor update with the iPhone XS, offering new gold and space gray colors, as well as a larger iPhone XS Plus model, similar to what they did with the iPhone 6S Plus, to make up for not having that many changes. One year later, we had the iPhone 11 Pro, which was a huge update focused on battery life, display quality, quality and cameras with Apple finally adding an ultra wide camera as well as pro raw photography. So we're basically starting to see a trend here. We get a brand new design, then a more minor update that's covered up by the introduction of a larger model, and then a new major camera focused update. Then we had the iPhone 12, which was another super cycle update with a new flat sided redesign, which came with 5G support and MagSafe, followed by the iPhone 13, which actually had a redesigned front with a smaller notch, 
the new cinematic video recording mode, and the massive display upgrade with 120Hz ProMotion technology. After that, we had the iPhone 14 Pro, which completely got rid of the display notch and introduced the dynamic island, as well as a huge upgrade to the cameras with the new 48 megapixel sensor that finally brought back the 2X camera mode, which works so well. And then finally, the most recent SuperCycle update with the iPhone 15 Pro with a redesigned titanium chassis with contoured edges, the action button, a huge upgrade to performance with the A17 Pro chip, the switch to the USB-C port, and the new 5X telephoto on the 15 Pro Max model, which is personally my favorite feature this year. So as you can tell by this trend, we honestly shouldn't be expecting much with the iPhone 16 Pro since we just had our Super Cycle update. And honestly, because of that, I don't think we should be expecting any changes to the camera bump whatsoever. I think it makes sense to keep it the same, maybe make it a little bit bigger than before while adding some minor changes to the phone and some sort of new feature that'll make it very enticing to upgrade. So let's go through this Mac Rumors article that shows off 25 plus changes with the iPhone 16 Pro. The biggest change by far is that the 16 Pro and Pro Max models are likely to finally get larger displays, 6.3 inches instead of 6.1 for the 16 Pro and 6.9 inches instead of 6.7 for the Pro Max. We of course have the new A18 Pro chip with a new thermal design, the new Snapdragon X75 modem and Wi-Fi 7, so all the performance and wireless specs will get a big upgrade. As far as the cameras, the main 48 megapixel sensor will get even bigger with better lenses across the board and with the regular Pro-sized model getting that new 5X telephoto lens and finally, a huge upgrade to a 48 megapixel ultra wide camera. On top of that, we're expecting the brand new capture button on the side, which will act like the shutter button that you get on a lot of pro digital cameras. As far as the batteries and charging, we're expecting a larger battery with brand new stacked cell technology and a boost to charging speeds with up to 40 watts wired and 20 watts wireless MagSafe. We're also expecting some new titanium gray and yellowish desert titanium color options and some major new exclusive AI features with iOS 18 alongside much improved microphones for the brand new C update. So based on all of that, the new iPhone 16 Pro models will essentially be just an improved version of the 15 Pro models, but with larger displays and with a huge marketing focus on pro camera upgrades and AI features, at least in my opinion. So with that said, don't expect any major upgrades in terms of a redesign to the camera bump or the display or the dynamic island because we actually have some leaks for the iPhone 17 Pro that reveal precisely what we should not be expecting this year. The iPhone 17 Pro models will apparently ditch the dynamic island in exchange for a single camera cutout with Face ID underneath the display while upgrading the selfie camera to a 24 megapixel sensor. On top of that, the 5X telephoto camera will get a huge upgrade to a 48 megapixel sensor, finally giving us 48 across all of the three rear cameras, which might finally come with a redesign to the camera bump. So because of that, we honestly just need to lower our expectations for the 16 Pro and think of it as a minor update. So as for those beautiful looking triangular camera bump renders that I had made over the weekend, yes, they're basically fake and definitely not happening. So if you're excited for the new iPhone 16 Pro, then click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one and check out one of those two videos right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.